So, uh, on the program today, we will be talking about the sequester, uh, the, uh, it is enraging to me, um, the Senate last night, in the dead of the night, literally in the dead of the night, passed a fix for the sequester, not for Head Start, not for the NIH, not for those schools that have had to cut 30% of uh, their teachers because they rely on federal funds. Maybe they're on a um, military base. Maybe they're on a, an Indian reservation. But rather, to allow the FAA to avoid furloughing some air traffic controllers and shutting down some small regional airports. Because, of course, this is all the media and the wealthy are terribly concerned about. Uh, we will get into that with, with Cliff. N I, I mean, this should not... Uh, I'm going to try and really contain myself here. This is just a horrible move by the Senate. The administration has given every indication it's going, not going to veto this bill thereby completely, as far as I can tell, because, of course, the sequester has hit a lot of, um, of poor people at this point. The sequester has hit a lot of middle-class people in terms of their schools. The sequester has hit a, a range of, of functions of the federal government, uh, yet it is only that which directly implicates the wealthy that um, we're going to see any fix for. And therefore, it, it, it completely defangs the sequester as a, as a tool in which to force, uh, I guess, the Republicans to accept uh, tax increases, if that was the plan. The other um, sort of a disaster coming out of the Senate, and this happened uh, literally last night. I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly what time it was, but it was late at night. Um, there was not even a roll call for this. You had, let me just set the, the table here, and uh, that there were stories, increasing stories around the country following the FAA's furloughs, which took place I think even less than a week ago, um, of flight delays, increased flight delays, which I think were sort of overblown on some level, but I think it's also a function of, you know, the media flies around a lot, and uh, they've been waiting for this, and they were going to report on it. Now, meanwhile, we, of course, have decimated Head Start. We have cut back on NIH funding. I mean, people know uh, there's stories about uh, towns in California that have just been decimated by this. We are uh, cutting back on school lunches. We're, I mean, the list goes on and on. But it's all of those implications at first are more acutely felt by the disenfranchised, the essentially the voiceless in, in our country. But when, you know, you're flying to Kalamazoo or wherever it is that yeah. may have their uh, regional airport, um, and I'll do respect to Kalamazoo. I don't know if your regional airport was shut down. Um, <laughs> But when you're so flying, your, Kalamazoo, man. when you're flying to your uh, regional airport and it's shut down, or when you've got a delay out of LaGuardia, well, wait a second. And so we hear we, we hear hearings immediately take place, and within hours, of the Senate last night, like I say, in the dead of the night, without a roll call, uh, passed legislation that essentially says the FAA now has authority to transfer. Uh, up to $250 million from accounts that have money into other programs. In other words, they don't have to do the across-the-board cut that's mandated by the sequester. They can shift stuff around. And the House is expected to pass this, no problem. And now the, the White House is expected to uh, sign it. And this is just, I mean, this is just a stunning cave by the Democrats. I wouldn't even call well, it a cave. I mean, I mean it's, and, and again, it's, it's craven. It obviously hasn't taken effect yet because I was sitting on the runway for about an hour uh, in, in, at Reagan. I, oh, I shouldn't say that word, at National in uh -huh. D.C., which is why I almost didn't uh, make it here in time. But but I will say, you know, you just get so – you get to the point where you kind of throw your hands up. It's kind of like their secret uh, – yeah, their, their secret undoing of the Stock Act. 
Right. You know, I mean, there's just no level of hypocrisy these people won't go to, and they feel like they are shielded from all of it, whether it's they're, they're having government health care, but oh, no, you can't, to their, they're not having to deal with Social Security, but oh, you know, they have great big pensions, but we'll cut yours. Uh, this is just another in the long. They know they have to fly home. Many of them off to their districts. They know people that fly, uh, so that becomes something important. That's something. So they want to. You know, they they still want to be able to, to to give the pain without the pain actually affecting them and the people right. they're friends with. Right. And that's that's really what it comes down to in the end. Well, you know, the Stock Act is incredibly craven. This is also just sort of. I mean, where does this leave the Democrats now in terms of their pushes to repeal the sequester? I mean, because there was it seemed to me yesterday and the day before there was growing support, albeit maybe still nascent, but growing support for simply canceling the sequester. And because of the pressure that that was being brought to bear uh, on senators, on House members, be, and and sadly, just because uh, more or less uh, the biggest uh, pressure point uh, was these flight delays, and now that seems to be just in a in a in an instant, just simply washed away. And so uh, the Democrats in the Senate, the Democrats in the House, if they're needed to pass this, they probably all will. Uh, the White House is basically saying we're going to take the biggest arrow in our quiver in terms of um, of repealing the sequester and we're going to break it in half. And now the only arrows in that quiver, it seems to me, are defense contracting, right? That I would say soon they'll do that. They'll find a way to reinstate uh, money for the defense guys too. And then all that's going to be left are cuts essentially to the social safety net and to uh, services that are provided to, you know, anywhere from uh, 20 or 30 percent of the public to uh, 50 or 60 percent of the public, but the most, the least politically powerful. And so then it's just going to be incumbent upon um, supposed, uh, you know, uh, uh, upon liberals to reverse that by ushering in, you know, cuts to Social Security. I mean, isn't that, I mean, that's, that's the, you know, this is what we've been talking about for an extended period of time. And then we heard, no, the sequester is going to pressure the Republicans and the Democrats equally. And then we're seeing the whole mechanism fall apart by the apologists for this policy. I, uh, I mean, again, like, it, it feels like this should all just be satire. Because they created this fake, stupid thing that didn't need to be done to run away from actually doing their jobs. And, and oh, but no, because everybody's going to be so scared of it that they're going to have to act. And of course, we knew they wouldn't act, but now they're just acting on the parts that really hurt them. Uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, you're right. I mean, you take away those, those, those pressure points, and the whole thing may just go on forever. Um, none of these guys have the courage to act. It just, it's just another one of those moments where you just shake your head and you realize, like, do these guys care what a clown show they are? Um, you know, I don't even know how how else to sort of analyze it at this point. Well, I mean, we know, I mean, we know at the, at the very least that there seems to be slowly growing, um, growing uh, fight amongst progressives in the House and perhaps in the Senate uh, to the uh, proposed chain CPI cuts um, this week. You had uh, the Congressional Progressive Caucus send a letter to President Obama and say, hey, you know, you seem to have met with just about everybody in Washington uh, except for us on this, uh, on this whole sequester grand bargain thing. We, we want to sit down with you and, uh, to, so that you can hear how, how adamantly we're against the um, uh, Social Security cuts. I don't know that a sit-down makes any difference, but at least they're making – they are willing to – to now really start to put some distance between themselves and the Obama administration, which I think is right. going to be necessary to um, uh, for them, both in their electoral uh, opportunities in 2014 and also to protect Social Security. 
Yeah, and it's a shame, but that's what I mean. You know, you talk about where the incentives are. That's where it's looking like it's going to be. That you've got to put your distance between you and your own president, which is sad. And you also have to, and that's talking about, that's not talking about like Democrats in more conservative districts who might have had to do that because that's where they're from. We're talking about people that should be able to stand hand in hand with the president and now have to do it because of this idiocy. They have to distance themselves. And again, that's the incentive. But the incentive also is if you care about Social Security, you're going to protect Social Security too. And, and that's what progressive matters. Members, uh, you would think, and it seems, care about shockingly. So that I mean, that's what you see happen. I mean, the whole thing has just turned into an entire mess, and it was just none of it was necessary. Um, and uh, you know, again, it's just it's the way things go in Washington. It's uh, what I think we need to do at any point. You know, it, it, no matter what, is make a list of things of words that I never want to hear again. I think unless you're dealing with a jury, the word sequester, sequestration, should be just banned from the dictionary. I don't want to ever hear it again. Kind of, it's kind of like gang of something in Washington. Oh my God! You know what I'm, I mean? It's like these guys. Think <laughs> Literally, when cool. you said that, everybody in this office just went ugh. I know. It's like these guys think they're cool, and they come up with these terms for things. They're just the stupidest things in the world. Well, you know, the point is, is that any of these gangs, what they're always trying to do is put themselves as close to the fulcrum. As they can, uh, right? I mean, uh, think if of a seesaw, the folks. Gangs, they're, they're the ones gangs, who want to sit. They right? dress up like the right. dead rabbits and put some skin into it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure. Actually, I know. Did you ever see Gangs of New York? Come on, I'm, I guess I'm striking out here. Oh okay. no, no, I did see um, uh, Warriors though. Oh, if they could be like the Warriors. What was that other group of guys in that? Uh, the the uh, the Orphans? The Baseball Furies. Right, the Baseball Furies. And they'll mean... all dress up like the Baseball Furies and allow them to do whatever they want to policy. Now, they Cliff Schechter, you lived in New York in, in the day of... Uh... <laughs> I, I love I love those late seventies movies like the Warriors and you know, like Warriors and and uh, Escape from New York and everything where uh, New York was just like this one bleak you know like just hellhole falling apart which actually was not that far off from where New York was in the seventies going bankrupt and uh, you know that kind of stuff. 